welcome to this historical tour of the beautiful capital city of Michoacan State. Welcome. Where do you come from today? Canada. Chupala, Mississippi? Well, today, today. Oh, Mexico. Chapala. Yeah, we, we make a really strong pronunciation on the letter A, which for us it sounds like, oh. So Chapala sounds like, This is oh, a bus oh. tour on a double deck of bus in Morelia. Well, welcome to Morelia. As I already said, this is the capital city of Michoacan State. Anciently, it was called by the police. And even before that, it was known as the new city of Michoacan because city was the political category of the capital. So, whatever you call This is a 450 year old building. The civil power, the power, the civil power that has just been taken. The religious power was ruling from. Uh, we went to wires. A warning here. We are supposed to have a wire for this environment, but it's not so for you. So, mind you, please take care of some branches and some wires that remain in Calco during our trip. Please observe, please observe these rules. When gathering the low branches or wires, very some resample trees even where they are. Or at this stop, right? Yes. Are you with me? Okay. Now, <clears throat> we are beginning our trip. Coming to the theater's zone. The building to your right is the Ocampa Theater, the oldest and most famous theater in this city. It is said that they were uh, playing a stage when they got word that ex-governor Ocampo, Mitchell Ocampo, had been slain and they renamed the place as Teatro Ocampo, the Ocampo Theater. Now, take a look at the house at the right too. These two story building here is known as the princess uh, house because here it lived the woman that married our emperor, our first emperor, actually the one who finished the Mexican independence war, Agustin de Iturbide. She had this house because she studied at the La Rosas College, which is just crossing the corner. And that's why we call that a building is known as the Empress House. Nowadays, it's a museum, one of the most beautiful museums that we have in Mexico. It is known as the Museum of the State. Now, to your left, we have the clergy jail. This yes. is a jail. It was a jail. Now you will see a, a white stone plate over there with two lamps. That states that Mariano Matamoros was held captive here before being slain on February 1814 in here in Morelia. Yeah. This part of the building, it was the same building, but while that part was the clergy jail, this was the house that hosted the bishop Rich. And take a very close look at the cathedral from here. Some people have not access to the heart of downtown Morelia because the teachers are having a manifestation over there. They are uh, saying they are teachers, but they are not to receive a lesson. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, they are making uh, some kind of a strike because they haven't received some money they promised to them. And um, well, I would be doing the same if that happened to me. <laughs> now, take a look at the architecture we have here in Morelia. You can see it to your left, to your right. Very tall buildings. The pink stone that the houses are made of came from the uh, little mountain you can see at the very end of the landscape. That mountain, its name, Kumwato. Kumwato means the mountain that shines. And that's because no matter what season of the year there in Morelia, whenever you see the sunrise, it comes from behind that mountain. Now we are headed south and we will get to the 
government's palace that originally was the seminar, a uh, school for the clergy. This building is very, very beautiful, very nice. Sadly, we won't be able to see it from its front because the teachers are already covering that part. But we can see this, this project to your right. It was named the Calle de la Cachucha, the street of the hat. That's because a very fat man used to live here in this house. He was a French medic. And whenever uh, he got the afternoon and we were resting on his uh, swinging chair, people would come here to ask for help, for money. He used to help people. He didn't charge, for instance. Uh, his, uh, his customers if they were poor because he was a very sensitive man however his wife didn't agree with that <laughs> so he made a trick he started doing this whenever he was resting on his uh, swinging chair he would wear a hat and he would fall asleep when the chair was, was uh, resting on its back people would come here and wait until he would take his hat off and many coins would fell from his back head. Yes, that's why that street was named the La Cachucha Street. Cachucha is a small hat in Spanish. Now, the house to your left, the white one, was known as the House of Capitan Garcia Obeso. It is said that in 1809, many people, very influent and powerful, pe powerful people from Morelia, well, actually, in that time it was Valladolid. People from Valladolid, very powerful, members of the military and members of the clergy, joined here and started, uh, started uh, making plots against the Spanish, the Spanish government. However, they got, they got caught and they were, they were sent to jail, but most of them were set free less than a year after that because they were very powerful and very influential person. So it is said that the plot that actually kick-started the Mexican independence war started in this very house because it predated the starting of the uh, independence war at least for a year. We have came, we have got to know that uh, actually there were other conspiracies before the one in 1809 here in Valladolid, but they are not as famous as this one because the members of the club were very powerful, very intelligent, and nowadays it's one of the most important banks here in Morelia. Oddly enough, the bank is Spanish. So we took a 360 degrees turn. We are heading to the run by the Calle Real, the Royal Street. Take a look at the building, please. The pink stone is graceful, but when well worked, it's magnificent. Ever heard of a politician working? Me neither. But over there, there is a house of representatives from Michoacan State. It is said Palacio del Poder Legislativo, House of Representatives. There is a year engraved over there, 1897. That's when this house was rebuilt by a North American person. And it was so nicely done that the governor of that time, Aristeo Mercado, bought the house for himself. Nowadays, it hosts the representatives. Morelia has a lot of temples. Originally, it had 35, 35 public temples and chapels. Nowadays, it only has 18. Here we have the La Cruz Temple, the Temple of the Cross. You said that around 1660, this temple alone had so many values and so many richness in its insides that it was uh, richer than the rest of the city together. So it was exaggerated that uh, we believe most times they were telling the truth because 
in the temples, they were having a lot of uh, commonplace, common things made of silver and solid gold. The building you're looking at, at your front left, is the convent of the nuns. That's its nickname here in Morelia, Las Monjas. It was a convent, half a block uh, large, and as you can see, we still have the temple that used to serve to this convent. This temple is known as the Nuns Temple, El Templo de las Monjas. It has two doors, because one is the main door, the main entrance, and the second one was only to open when a member of the order wanted to get to the door and outside of the order, and they could let her out, closing the second door behind her, and by thus, meaning she would never be allowed to enter again. Please take a look at your left. This building, it's beautiful. It's French. It, is, it was originally built to be a school, the Escuela de Guadalupe. But the government, the revolutionary government, As you can see, that building is more beautiful. Now we, we find that there is something very beautiful about the city. Morelia was known 20 to 30 years ago as the city of the open doors. Why, why was that? Because all of the houses you are seeing here used to have the main gate open. At your left, there is a sample of that. The main gate is open for you to take a look at the inside. Now imagine all of the houses alongside the Calle Real with their main doors open. That was for you as a visitor to take a peek inside and look at the riches that were held inside. Here we have at your left another example of that. Over there, that house with the silver car, it always has its main door open for you to see the fountain, the flowers, the plants, some other things, mostly architectural, artistic, and cultural values. That's why Morelia had that name. Sadly, since the 1990s, most of downtown houses have been turned into one of the 